In a recent post on the tech media site TNW, they talked about five ways to boost your salary as a software developer. I think that one of them misses the point altogether, two are plain wrong, one of them's only part of an answer, and the last is rather short-sighted and they miss the most important point of all, as far as I can see. So let's discuss. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe and if you enjoy the content here today, hit like as well. The post lists five ways to increase your salary. So let's start by thinking about whether that's the right goal to set or not. I confess that while I've always hoped to make a decent living as a software developer, I've never chosen a job only on the basis of money. Clearly, it has to pay enough to meet my needs but I think that there's a lot more to it than that. But more importantly for me, I want to enjoy what it is that I do. I'd prefer to do something that I enjoy and earn enough to make ends meet than to do something that I hate but make a fortune. We spend an awful lot of our time, our lives at work. So doing something that we hate for money seems like a poor trade to me. I'm also not at all sure that focusing primarily on money is the best way always to maximise your income or your fulfilment as a software professional. So either way, money's not really the best target to set. Of course, your mileage may vary. Anyway, here are the five ways that the post recommends that we should adopt to increase our salaries. Learn a high paying language. Learn to work alongside AI. Specialise in cyber security. Take the reins with product management and develop your leadership skills. So let's take a look at each of these things and then talk about the things that these recommendations get wrong or miss out altogether. Here's the first. Well, yes, if your goal is to make money, language choice makes some difference. But let's be clear about this. There's not one language that makes you a millionaire and another that makes you a pauper. In most parts of the world, software development is a good, well-paid job compared to other ways of making a living. It may not make you rich, but it will normally deliver an above average income for work that is usually also engaging and interesting. The average US salary is around $60,000. An average US programmer salary is around $75,000. So we're already ahead of the game. According to the data I looked at, C programmers earn a little bit below this average, while on average Java programmers, C++, Python, Elixir and Rust programmers earn considerably more. Each of those earns around about $110,000 in the US. Between these languages that pay a little more, the differences are a very small percentage. And so this isn't just about core and popular languages either. I'd suggest that Java and Elixir jobs pay well for different reasons, but also the same reason. But before I explain that, let me pause and say thanks to our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic and Semaphore. All of these companies offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics that we discuss on this channel every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and in software engineering in general, please do click on their links in the description below and check them out and show your support for the channel by doing so. So why do Java and Elixir jobs pay well? Well, Java, along with Python and JavaScript, are amongst the most popular programming languages in the world. So there are lots of jobs in those languages compared to others. Competition then is high for good programmers in these fields. Elixir, by comparison, is a minority sport. So there are few good Elixir programmers and so they are also in high demand. This is fairly obviously all about competition and supply and demand. So if you want to increase your chances of earning a high salary, focus your skills on what's in high demand in the areas where you live. This is pretty obvious, but this is not about being cool and not necessarily about the sexiest programming language. For example, one of the higher paying programming languages is COBOL. 
because there is a huge legacy of code written in this language and the skills to maintain these systems are very hard indeed to find. Similarly, programmers with specific domain expertise will attract higher salaries than programmers without. More on that later. This item is the one that I think is only part of the answer. Yes, programming language has an effect, but it isn't as simple as only following a herd to the most popular programming language. Next in the list is learn to work alongside AI. Well, yeah, if you're a programmer and you're ignoring the development of AI, you're almost certainly missing something that's important. But I also say that currently the picture of the future is rather unclear. I think that it's wise to be keeping an eye on developments in AI with respect to programming, but also not buying into all of the hype. But I don't think that it's likely to have a dramatic impact on employability or on salaries in the immediate future. My assumption is that the article's authors added this item because AI is so high in its hype cycle at the moment and it's hard to leave it out of almost any article related to technology. If I'm honest, my bet is that AI will probably have an impact in terms of salaries first at the lower ends of the pay scale, unlike some other industries. We'll talk more about this later too. Third in the list is specialise in cybersecurity. I think that this is a bit of a cop-out and plain wrong. Sure, cybersecurity is an in-demand skill, but it won't be if everyone takes this advice. It's valued because the skills are rare and are in-demand. So we could also say give up programming altogether and become a cardiologist, which is according to some sources the highest paid job in the US at the moment. I think that this advice is wrong and too specific. I would instead advise that you find something that interests you. Check to see if it's a marketable skill in the part of the world where you live, and if it is, then develop your expertise and experience in that specialism. This is more likely to be a success for you, both in terms of getting to those higher salaries and in enjoying your work more. So yeah, developing an area of expertise is a very good idea. Blindly choosing cybersecurity is not really a great idea, unless that's already your area of interest or skill. The next in the list seems to me plain wrong, but it's nearly right. Take the reins with product management. As a technical person, I've always disliked and been rather disdainful of the idea of non-technical path to promotion as the default. Of course, if you're particularly interested in non-technical aspects of software development, then by all means follow that path. But first, the US-based site that I was using to check for salaries doesn't rate product management very much higher than the well-paid programming jobs. So it's not an obvious win to increase your salary if that's your goal. The degree to which this is nearly right though, is that understanding the products and your users need for and use of them is a sensible and valuable goal, whether you're a product owner or not. You'll be a better software developer if you do understand the problems that you're solving better. And the more advanced take on what it means to develop software will usually be seen as more valuable by employers. The last in the list is develop leadership skills. Well, yeah, you'll increase your value as you increase your impact in the organizations that employ you. By definition, one way to increase your organizational impact is to lead more. This isn't necessarily the same as managing though. Leadership can take a variety of forms, including technical leadership. So if you're keen to stay on a technical track rather than a managerial track, there are other routes to increasing your influence and so your value in the organisation. Deepen your domain and or technical expertise. Help to coach and mentor other people. Maybe help to promote your organisation through writing or public speaking or representing them in user groups and other technical networks. Maybe release some open source software to spread the awareness of you and your organization. Not all of these ideas may be relevant or appropriate depending on you and your organization, but some of them will be. I don't believe that shifting track from technical to managerial is the only or best option for technical people. Often technical people make poor managers and it's not what they want to do. So overall, I'm not wildly impressed with this list, to be honest. So let's now think about the other stuff that it missed. We're talking here about a marketplace. 
So if you want to increase your value in that marketplace, you need to first understand what skills and expertise are valued. One place to start is to go where the money is. As I've already mentioned, I think that chasing money alone is a poor strategy, but at the same time, you simply aren't going to make as much money working for charities as you are working for, say, a bank. Sad as this may be, you often get other forms of value though from working in other industries. For example, I've very much enjoyed working with teams building medical systems, partly because it makes me feel good about my contribution to humanity. In contrast, the finance industry generally pays better, but doesn't leave me feeling quite so good about my contribution. Both finance and medical systems have some really interesting problems to solve though, which is my real primary motivation. So I'm happy in either place and many others. At the other extreme though, I wouldn't work for a tobacco company whether they were paying me a lot of money or not. So this is a decision is more complex and nuanced than only about money, at least for me. It's a balance of things and salary is, or in my opinion should be, only one of them. But if your aim is to increase your worth and so your salary, then thinking in terms of employment as a marketplace and how to improve your marketability in that market is I think important. What is your local market looking for? If there is no finance development in your local job market, what sorts of employers pay well and offer interesting challenges? If you're a regular viewer of this channel, then my opinion on what makes us really marketable probably won't surprise you much. I think that software development is about a lot more than merely typing code. It's ultimately about solving problems for people and code is merely the tool that we use to achieve that, that goal and solve those problems. So I think that working on your value as a problem solver is a, in a much broader sense and going beyond limiting your skills and expertise to only coding is a good starting point. If your aim is to increase your value to existing or potential employers, skill at coding is certainly important. But it's important in ways that many of us, but particularly beginners, often seem to miss. Someone who knows every last wrinkle of C Sharp or Java certainly has some value in the marketplace. But that expertise is secondary to their ability to apply it to creating good, maintainable, useful systems. And this takes skills that go far beyond only the coding. How do we coach people to shape better requirements so that coding and testing are easier? How do we decompose systems and code into smaller, more manageable pieces so that the systems that we create are easier to change and so development's faster and more scalable and more efficient? How can we see opportunities to advance the business of our employers if we don't understand their business? How can they see opportunities to advance if they don't understand the technology? Developers with good technical and communication skills and a good understanding of the business that they work in are more valuable than only coders waiting to be told what to code. So learn to understand the problem that you're working on. Great software development is a partnership of people with a range of different skills. To be part of that, we need to develop a range of skills to make that happen. We make ourselves more valuable to our employers when we do a better job. Inevitably, there are some poor employers who may not see it and may not reward that value. I still think that focusing on doing a great job, even if that is going against the tide of your malfunctioning employer, is the best strategy for you. At a minimum, it will make you feel good about yourself and make you a strong candidate when you do decide to re-enter the job market. So ultimately, if this really is a marketplace, we always have the choice to take our skills and experience elsewhere and invest them somewhere else. So my last recommendation on how to earn more money, sometimes as a last resort, sometimes not, is to move jobs. If the market is strong enough where you live, to quote Martin Fowler, if you can't change the company that you work in, then change the company that you work in. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy our stuff here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider supporting our work by joining our Patreon community. There are lots of advantages to that. There's links and details in the description below. Thank you and bye-bye.